Hi again. All right, so this is episode two. Uh, in this episode, I am going to uh, talk about how I researched backpacking and going on a section hike. I'll talk a little bit about my tent, show you how I pitched it, talk about seam sealing it. I will talk a little bit about bear bags and give you links to learn how to hang one. I will show you all of the food that I brought on my trip. I'll talk a little bit about how I trained for the hike to get kind of physically ready for it. I will show you each of the things that went into my backpack and then finally I'll show you how I packed my pack. And I, uh, I really hope this is helpful. Enjoy. All right, let's talk about research. Uh, as soon as I figured out I wanted to go backpacking, I just dove into YouTube and I found a few channels that were incredibly useful. Uh, I used Homemade Wanderlust by Dixie, that's her trail name, and then Darwin on the Trail by that guy. Um, and, uh, well, I guess I'll talk a little bit about like why I picked the Superior Hiking Trail. It's really simple. Um, as I was watching their videos, I realized that I I didn't want to just go backpacking for a few days. I wanted to do a longer hike, a longer time out there on the trail. Um, and then I figured out that you could just do a section hike. You didn't have to hike through an entire trail. Um, I was going to be up in the Boundary Waters on an artist retreat, so I decided to just stay there an extra eight days and hike the Superior Hiking Trail um, and just do a section hike of it. And that's when I found the other channel that I used a lot, which was Outdoor Adventure by Frozen. He had just completed a, a hike through of the Superior Hiking Trail, which is 310 miles end to end. I think he completed it in two weeks and he might have been going for an FKT, which is a fastest known time, but I'm not sure. So as I was watching all of these videos, I started to notice that pack weight was a really huge issue and um, also seemingly kind of competitive amongst all of the through hikers. And it made me question uh, really just how much weight would I be physically capable of carrying um, and how far could I travel with that amount of weight on my back? I spent a ton of time on the internet trying to answer that question, um, find an answer for that question and there's just, you know, it all says it depends. So I'll just tell you about me physically and if you're anything like me, this is what I was able to do. Uh, I am 5'5", five five, I'm 49 years old. Uh, I'm reasonably fit. I run every once in a while and then I quit for a while. I do Pilates every once in a while and then I'll quit for a while and not do anything. Um, spend a lot of time at a computer, a lot of time outside. So my physical issues, the most relevant ones are I have plantar fasciitis um, and that's a new development in the last year, not from hiking. And I just have some issues with my neck, um, like a herniated disc from a long time ago. Uh, a friend of mine said, you know, as you age, you don't get injuries, you get conditions. So that's a condition. Um, and it turns out I was able to comfortably carry 24 pounds, which is a light pack, uh, you know, and, and really capable of doing 10 miles a day um, easily. Without any real idea of how much I physically could carry, um, I just had to dive in and start really looking at the kind of gear I needed to have a light pack, a relatively light pack. Um, I was looking at all of these through hikers, you know, and they have ultra light packs and all of that stuff is so expensive. So I, kind, I had to find some kind of happy medium. Um, I dove in, I looked at all of the, uh, all of those YouTubers use uh, lighterpacks.com where they list all of their gear item by item and how much it weighs. And so I just dove into their list and really geeked out. And I have to say, I really enjoyed that part of planning the hike. Um, and I, so I looked at everything they had. I ended up pretty much copying uh, Dixie on Homemade Wanderlust for the backpack and the shoes. Those were the two things I decided to splurge on because they directly impacted my body. And then I followed Darwin on the trails advice on uh, uh, some other cheaper items. He had a vlog about how to you know, gear up for a, a hike kind of on the cheap. So I got a much cheaper, um, like a little ultralight tent and a sleeping bag and a sleep pad. I copied him on the cook system as well. And I'll show all of those things later. And once all the research was done, I just had to commit to another round of not small purchases and just pray that I ended up loving backpacking, which I did. 
Otherwise, I was going to have to spend the next six months on eBay trying to unload everything I had just acquired. You see that a lot. eBay is a great resource, by the way, for stuff. All right, let's talk about the tent. Okay, here's the tent. It's the one recommended by Darwin on the Trail. It's a Lanshan 3F two-person ultralight tent. I got it on AliExpress for about 90 bucks, 100 with shipping. The tent comes with a tent, the fly, eight stakes, and some extra guy line. And you can pitch the tent without the fly, but I have no idea how to do that yet. You use your trekking poles to pitch this tent, and I'd never done that before, so I took the tent out in the backyard and practiced a bunch, which I highly recommend doing. To pitch this tent, you stake out the four corners and then you slide a trekking pole in on one side. You can see the black triangle there just sits there behind that. And then you stake out that side. Then run around and insert the pole on the other side and stake that out. Then stake out the two guy lines at either end, which helps stabilize the tent and ostensibly gives you more head and foot room. Adjust the tension everywhere and you're done. Okay, so the tent is pitched. You can see behind me. Um, once I pitched it, I went ahead and uh, seam sealed it. That was my big plan for today because it's a gorgeous day and it's not super hot and there's no rain forecast because it needs about six to 12 hours to cure. I'm gonna give it, you know, till sundown and I pretty much have to babysit it out here all day. I can't just leave it because the last time I pitched it, the neighborhood tomcat came and sprayed the inside of my tent he snuck under the fly and sprayed the inside of the tent onto the tent floor. I seam sealed with Silnet, I don't know if I said that or not, um, and it comes with a little tiny brush. And uh, I just ran it over all of the outside seams um, and anywhere anything was sewn on. Uh, it just says apply a thin layer, so I did that. And then I went inside the tent and applied it in those two tiny places near the uh, mesh pouches. Um, where I suspected water had gotten in. I don't know how it could have when I really looked at it, but maybe it did. Um, right. So I have some time to kill outside because I have to guard my tent from the <laughs> tomcat who peed on it. Uh, so I'm gonna practice hanging my bear bag um, and this is what it looks like it's a z-pax um, bear bag and I've got some food in there just so it's kind of the right weight um, the bear bag kit comes with a little tiny rock sack and it also comes with 50 feet of cord um, which I think is nylon cord uh, it's just really smooth it's supposed to not you know, snag on tree branches. So I have been studying up, watching videos of how to do the PCT hang. There is a lot of controversy about how one should or should not hang a bear bag. Um, but the one thing that I know is that I have to when I go out on the trail. So I picked the PCT hang. All right, you can see behind me, right there is the bear bag that I just hung. There are a lot of really good videos um, that I will link below for how to hang one. Uh, just in short, you need to know how to tie a bowline in and a clove hitch. Um, and just practice, practice, practice. Like I thought I learned them and then I got out here today and it had been a couple of weeks and I had totally forgotten. So um, I'm just going to see how it works and hopefully people on the trail will have mercy on me and show me how to do it right if I'm doing it wrong. I finally got all my food organized. Um, what I decided to do for this trip, uh, rather than kind of agonize over the food part of the whole thing, was I found uh, a company called Outdoor Herbivore, and they provide vegan and vegetarian meals. And uh, they offer a 10-day combo pack, so I ordered that. It averaged out to $17 a day. Um, just under $17 a day for what I thought was three meals a day um, but it turned out 
they think about lunch as a snack more than as a meal, I guess. Um, but since I'm really only out there for seven days plus a breakfast, uh, I went ahead and used those snacks like snacks. So I'll just show you what I have laid out. All right, so for day one, uh, I'm gonna start off with some blueberry maple crunch. It's a cold cereal, so it just takes a, a half a cup of cold water and then we'll have a little bit of instant hummus, which takes a half a cup of cold water for lunch and I'll bring some tortillas for that, I guess. And then a basil walnut penne pasta, which is one and a half cups of hot water for dinner. Um, day two, We'll start off with a chia oat crunch. Uh, again, just a half cup of cold water. And then for lunch, uh, it looks like it's a, a salad that is gonna want a half a cup of cold water. And then for dinner, lickety split lentils, um, sort of a soup or a stew, I guess. And then day three, wake up and have some toasted sunburst muesli using, unspecified amount of cold water for that. Uh, then a Waldorf salad for lunch. That'll take just a third of a cup of cold water. And then for dinner, peanutty matchsticks, um, which looks like it is a noodle mix um, that takes hot water. So, and then for snacks, uh, I happen to have these extras. So these are coconutty chomps and then a ginger berry fusion, uh, kind of a trail mix, I guess. So these two things will be my snacks along the way. And then on day four, I will be actually at my car camping in Cascade River Park. So um, I will have a pantry there, uh, but if I don't wanna mess with it, then I'm just gonna have these. So this is a um, Denver veggie scramble. Uh, since I don't eat dairy, I'm probably not gonna have that, but I just have it set in that place, um, just so I know that I need a breakfast. And then for lunch, uh, I'll do a blackened quinoa. That's gonna take hot water, but that's fine, because I'll be at my car and I'll have my Coleman stove. Um, and then a bagel switchback soup. And then I'll need breakfast for day five. So I went ahead and set aside this oatmeal, but again, I'll probably just make myself pancakes and you know, I'll have my pantry in my car. Um, and then I go back out again for three days. So uh, on day five, I'll just need lunch and dinner. So I'm gonna do a Pacific Crest vinaigrette, um, which is a salad. It's gonna take a half a cup of cold water. And then for dinner, I'll do a chickpea sesame getty. Uh, which I think is a pasta dish. Um, day six, I will wake up and have some toasted sunburst muesli. Pretty excited about that. Cold water for that. Cold water for the sunny sunflower salad I'm gonna have for lunch. And then for dinner, I'll have a chunky chipotle chili. And that takes hot water. And then day seven, I'm gonna have some high elevation rice cereal. And then I'm gonna have for lunch a coconut chia peel, which actually was in the breakfast pack, but um, I ran out of options there for lunches because I didn't want to eat a snack for lunch. So I'm gonna do breakfast for lunch. And then for dinner, I'm gonna do a lemongrass Thai curry. And then uh, I'm gonna have breakfast out of this bag too for the day eight. And that's the day that I'm just going back to my car. So I'll wake up on day eight, have some toasted sunburst muesli again, and go to my car. And then for my snacks, uh, I got another bag in the combo of the Cinnamonkey, incredibly messy looking Cinnamonkey chops, and then uh, a little bag of chili lime crunchies. Oh, so I'm gonna just pack each of these into their own little bag so that I know what's what, and I don't really have to think about it. Um, I'll take days one through three with me uh, and then I'll leave days four through eight in the car and when I resupply from the car I'll swap out and uh, yeah that's it to 
practice hiking and get in shape, I went to the River Place Nature Trail in Austin. It's a three mile out and back, so a total of six miles trail. Um, and it has 1,700 feet in elevation change. So it's a great place to put on your backpack, get your trekking poles out, and get on your hiking shoes and walk it. I, I probably did the trail about eight times before I left for the trip. And because I did that, I was able to test out shoes. I went through four different pairs of shoes before I found the right ones. I learned how to use my trekking poles really well. And I learned what the backpack felt like with 25 pounds in it and uh, was able to get it all adjusted and feeling good before I actually made it out to the Superior Hiking Trail. I am just about ready to go. I am about to put everything in my pack and practice packing it. Uh, so I thought I would share what is going in the pack. So let's take a look. All right, we will kick it off with my Z-Pax Arc haul. I've taken it out a couple of times, um, pretty much fully loaded and it's worked out pretty well. I mean, I, there's still some kind of dialing in to do with the fit. Uh, like I cut the circulation off of my right arm today, but <laughs> I'm sure I'll figure it out. Um, here are my trekking poles. They are Cascade Mountain trekking poles. They're adjustable um, and I need them to be because I walk with them at about 105 or 110 centimeters, but my tent needs them to be 120. Um, here is a ground sheet. It's a Gossamer gear ground sheet I'm going to cut it down to size and that's what I will put under my tent instead of I was going to use the footprint from my REI co-op passage too but I don't want to um, it weighs too much uh, here is a sit pad um, that I know I'm going to love and then this is my sleeping pad this is a little tiny sleeping pillow here's my steak sack and here's my tent. So that's all my shelter stuff in one shot. And all of this stuff uh, with my sleeping bag underneath it uh, came at the recommendation of Darwin on the trail. He has a vlog about how to how to do this if you're on a budget. Um, and I am a little conflicted because I really do love to support uh, a US company that is making really, really high quality stuff. But they have to charge a lot of money to make it worth their while, and I can't afford to pay that. Um, so I'm buying the very, very cheap versions of these things. And hopefully I'll be able to support them more, um, you know, slowly, a little bit at a time, if this, if this sticks and I end up loving doing it. I've been saving up some water bottles. I'm probably going to end up taking the uh, couple of one liter bottles and then this sports bottle with the flip top cap. Um, so I'm going to carry two liters with me and I'll just keep the little sports bottle full from the, from the two liter bottles. Uh, here is my food. So I've got the, the bear bag here and then an opsack with my three days of food. So there's day one, day two, and day three. And then a little rock sack that has 50 feet of cord inside of it. Um, here I have, uh, I think this is a Tox. um, but I'm not entirely sure, 750 milliliter cook stove, and inside it is the BRS stove, a four ounce canister of fuel, a mini Bic lighter, and a canister stand. Um, and then here I have a little cup with a lid and a little koozie. It's really thin, very lightweight, because uh, I want to drink coffee on the trail. I brought a lot of it, and I want to drink it out of a cup. even a triangular one. Here's a little mosquito net for my head. Um, and these things here, the, the mosquito net and the sleep pad and the pillow and this uh, spork, I'm probably gonna take all of those out of their stuff sacks. If I can figure out how to keep the sleep pad and the pillow compressed, um, just to save weight, I don't, I don't think they're necessary. Uh, this is a trash compactor bag for my um, sleeping bag to keep it dry in case it rains. Um, and on to clothes. Here is a stuff sack for my clothes. I got a little puffy jacket here. I've got a rain jacket, which is pretty heavy as far as the rain jackets go that are on the market, but you know, they cost a million dollars and that didn't. 
Uh, here's a buff that I'm going to use to keep my head warm and my hair hidden. <laughs> um, for sleeping, I'm going to have these sleep socks. And I already had some smart wool long johns from way back in the day, and they're pretty ratty, but they should work. And here is a hiking shirt. I would be not wearing this in Texas because it's black, and it would make me very, very hot, but I feel okay about it up there. Um, I may regret it. I don't know. Uh, and here's an extra pair of underwear and an extra pair of socks. Now, I, the shorts that I'm wearing that are not here... Um, have built-in underwear uh, and I'll probably just go with that and just rinse them out each night they'll be they'll be quick dry um, yeah we'll see we'll see how that all works I've been curious about how people do it but nobody ever talks about it so <laughs> I'll let you know um, here's some camp shoes there's zeros um, and the jury is out on these shoes I find them hard to uh, to put on and take off quickly um, which is sort of what you want when you're climbing out of your tent, uh, but they, they're really lightweight and they do pack up small and I do want Just I, I really don't like wearing shoes So I, I know I'll just take off my shoes the second I get to camp and want to put these on We'll see um, Here is a little tent and Lana repair kit So I've got some ibuprofen and some band-aids and some little alcohol wipes and I think I have maybe some antibacterial ointment in there, like a little tiny one. Um, and then I have some Max Deet for the bugs. I've got some duct tape, some tenacious tape. Um, I've got a lighter and a, a safety pin and a needle. So I, sh I don't know, should be good for anything that needs fixing. A little navigation system with a compass and the superior hiking trail maps four, five, and six, and my section plan, my hike plan, and a little cheat sheet for how to use a compass. I took the REI maps and navigation class. It was like two hours long, and I really just did not walk away having retained or really understanding. I got a, I understood it just the tiniest bit. So I know that I won't get lost on the superior hiking trail. It's really well blazed and. Um, but, I, but I'd like to practice, so I'm taking that stuff. And it's just smart to have a compass, even though I have a phone. And here's my hygiene kit. Um, you know, little body glide, some toothpaste, toothbrush floss, a light load towel, some baby wipes, a razor, which I probably won't use, tweezers, uh, clippers and a mirror. The mirror has a light on it. It looks huge and heavy, but it's actually very light. Um, and then some opsacks for trash. So there's one for trash. There's one uh, covered in gaff tape for my uh, toilet paper used. Here is a trowel for digging holes for the poop. And here is some toilet paper. No idea how much to take. Um, I don't know if that's way too much or not enough. We'll see. I'm going to learn the hard way. All right, here with my electronics. Uh, I'm gonna take this little headlamp and its little power cord. I'm gonna take my Nano and some headphones. And then here's the solar charger. Uh, I think it's like a 24,000 one. Um, here are my shoes with Dirty Girls attached already. These are the Ultra Tent Trails. I finally figured out what size. Uh, I wear nine and a half, which is like a, a size and a half up. Um, but I did a six mile hike um, in these today with a lot of elevation change um, and they were great. And uh, it turns out they have little gator traps already so I didn't have to attach Velcro and they've got a little hook for the gators right there. Um, so that's fun. Go tent trails, I really liked them. And then here is my resupply box and it's got extra toilet paper, extra duct tape, it's got the four days, the next four days of food, um, some extra fuel canisters, some extra bug spray, uh, the other maps for the trail, um, and an extra ground sheet in case the one that I'm using craps out for some reason. And that is everything. Here's like one last slow look at everything that's going to go into that pack and onto my back. <laughs> we'll see. All right, here we go.
That was just a real quick time lapse of me packing my pack. Uh, I had thrown my food in at first and then I decided to take it out because I didn't have an actual base weight. I just have the calculations in my um, spreadsheet. So I got on my actual bathroom scale, which also is not a great scale, and stood on it and then subtracted my weight, and that's how I got the 14.82 for my base weight. And then I put the food and I filled up the water bottles and I put those on the pack, and that came out to 24.4. So that's my pack weight. That's what I'm going to be carrying on the first day, and of course it'll get lighter as I eat the food um, over the course of those three days. And yeah. That's it. I'm like, my pack is packed. I'm going to get in my car tomorrow and drive to Minnesota.